we are going to talk about the carrot method today, Ruben. Mm-hmm. Who's our star? Who's coming in? What's up, Doc? We got Jeffrey Ginnimer. The, the king of sales? Yes. Oh, man. That's great. And we're going to be featuring Bugs Bunny. Even better. So the key to the carrot method is pulling people in, not pushing or being too salesy. This goes back to the old saying, you can use a carrot or you can use a stick. Now in sales, the carrot is attracting someone to you, not pushing your agenda upon them. One of the most important things that Jeffrey Gittimer talks about, which you're gonna see in this next clip, is the competitive edge. Now this is an example of when you wanna zig when everyone else is zagging. I don't teach how to sell. I teach why people buy. It's not easy to do that. For salespeople, your boss is going to tell you to cold call, and I'm going to tell you that 99 out of 100 people you cold call will hang the phone up on you or reject you, and it's the single biggest reason that salespeople quit rejection. Second biggest is lousy boss. So if you have a boss that demands cold calling and cold calling rejection, you have the perfect firestorm for quitting. So if you're a new salesperson, here's the opposite way to go. Go visit 10 existing customers and find out why they bought. Go with salespeople, go with your boss, go with the CEO of the company and find out why they do business with you. So on your next call out, your next outbound call, you can say, I know you don't know me, I'm brand new. Would you like to know why the last 10 people bought from us? So at least if you have to do it, don't try to introduce yourself. Don't try to go through the rigmarole of how are you today? Go through that. And if I were a new sales rep at a company, I would spend one week at customers' places of business, getting my training to discover why they bought. You know, if you're a sales rep, you have to ask questions rather than try to introduce yourself. Because I don't really care who you are at all. You know, if you have an idea for me or you have some questions for me, I'm ready to listen. If you're being taught how to sell, it will initially be uncomfortable because you feel like you're being pushy and you can remember all the salespeople in your life that you didn't like. The guy that sold you the washing machine, the guy that sold you the car, the guy that sold you the house. So to quote Roger Waters, the tide is turning and it's turning towards people that are shared value oriented, perceived value oriented and relationship oriented. So storytelling is so important when it comes to sales because it is a starting point. It's a conversation starter. And in fact, one of the easiest questions to ask someone that gives you a starting point. It allows you to find common ground and common ground is where a relationship can start. To talk in sales is an unnatural state. Hmm. Think about that because I would rather tell you what happened in the backyard when I picked up an alligator and was scared to death of him until my father-in-law came with a rubber band and put the rubber band around the alligator's mouth and I was safe. So it's like rubber band. It's like alligator repellent. It's a rubber band. The salesperson gets all caught up going from the bottom to the top when I start at the top and work my way down. Now, one of the great things about learning from Jeffrey Gittimer is that he has written extensively on the subject matter of sales. In fact, he has written over five New York Times best-selling books on sales, including the Little Red Book of Selling and the Sales Bible and so many other great titles. But here is the key. We shouldn't do what he says. We should do what he does. Now, here's a clip of Jeffrey talking about how he used Dub Video to close some deals. And after that, we're going to show you an actual video Jeffrey made that he sent out. Let's look at the subtlety of video and how powerful it is. Let me use it to engage my customers. And let me share with you how subtle it's become. When I first started using video, I attached a video to a proposal. Now I attach the proposal to a video. And if you don't think that's life changing, then you don't understand what I'm talking about. You make a video and you talk to that customer and say, listen, I've just attached this exceptionally boring proposal. I have left the price out on purpose, but I want to share with you what happens after you take ownership and how you win. So that when you read this proposal, it makes more sense. My cell number is, and I'll be standing by. And in the month of May, about $350,000 in sales using that strategy. So please don't tell me I tried it before and it didn't work. That's the sales wine of the century. Yeah, we used to do that, but it didn't work. No, you sucked at it and it didn't work for you. But that doesn't mean it does not work. Now, this next clip is going to be about asking questions, because remember, asking is engaging as a salesperson. And the key here is to provoke thought. It's to ask questions that are intelligent, that gets the person on the other side to start thinking, what do they need to change in their life? I'm going to ask them questions about them that make them stop and think, consider new information and respond in terms of me. That's called an engagement question. And so I'm going to talk to them about uh, the first thing I'm going to say is, you know, we hardly know each other. Where did you grow up? And whatever they answer gives me a place to go. 
but I've emotionally engaged them because they're thinking about the house they grew up in, their siblings, their mom and dad, if they're still alive, and all the memories that happened, the fist fights that they had in the bedroom with their brother or their sister, and all the things in between. So I not only do I have information about them that I might be able to further the conversation, if I know about their geography, but I certainly have an emotional engagement to begin with. 99.999 sales representatives will start out with something about, well, thank you for having me. Uh, let me tell you a little bit about our company. I don't give a shit about your company, bub. I don't give a shit about you. I don't care if you drop dead right here because there's somebody out in the waiting room just like you waiting to go next. Tell me something I don't know. And and the sales guy, uh, 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 well, that's not what I was taught. I was taught to go through these 27 boring slides. And listen, I'm very grateful for those people. Over the course of the last 25 years, it has made me a fortune. So attraction marketing is all about attracting people to a stage that you've created. Now, the key here is creating your own stage. It's creating your own podium, your own pedestal, and your own speaker. There's so many ideas here that we can do to attract people, like having a podcast or an online summit or interviewing people to be in your book. Now, remember, this is a great example of you. You want to be the carrot that pulls someone in, not the stick that beats them away. Now, in this next clip coming up, Jeffrey's going to talk about how you personalize videos. Now, this is personalizing videos to people that you don't know, right? Now, in sales, it's all about doing research. We've known that for years, but we're living in an age where people are online with their profiles, right? So the key here is to do your due diligence, check out people's profiles, see what their hobbies are, check out their photos, you know, really understand who this human being is that you're going to be communicating with. This is a dereliction of duty if you don't do this. People have profiles online because they want them to see them. So take advantage of that. Have a real human conversation based on what you've learned here about someone's real life. <laughs> the key is to not be weird about it. And remember, it's only as weird as you make it. I'm a big ACDC fan who's considered the goat of lead guitar players. Mm. Is five feet, two inches tall. Yeah. Who yeah. would have, I mean, when that kid was growing up, didn't he have a complex? Look what he had to overcome. And now he's, you know, he's a multi-jillionaire. He's considered the greatest guitar player of all time. But I could go down those rabbit holes to see the performer perform. I want to see how good are they? Can they make me watch their music twice? And the best ones can. And I don't care how tall they are. I care how good they are. And it's the same in selling. I, I don't care how tall you are. I don't care what you got on. I want to know how good you are. I want to know, can you transfer the message? Can you make me want to buy? Do you have a compelling message? Is it value driven? Do I have something in common with you that I like? It's not that hard. The key that Jeffrey's going to talk about here is the humor in sale. Yeah. The idea here is to be human and to be funny. Yeah. Well, the first thing I do is make fun of myself because if I do that, then the other person is relaxed. So I check into a hotel and they say, uh, can I help you? And I say, yeah, I'm here for my hair transplant. Rob, they don't know what the hell to say. <laughs> they literally do not. Because you could be serious. <laughs> and if they smile at me and they want to engage me a little bit more, I know who I'm dealing with. And that sets the tone for anything else that I want. Can I have some water? Can I get a potato chips? Can I get an early check-in? Can I get a better room? All the things that go with having broken the ice. Can I borrow a wig? <laughs> yeah. Can I borrow a wig? Exactly, Ruben. That's it. And they go, I don't have one. I go, wait, I do. If I say to somebody, where did you grow up? And they say a small town. I said, well, I guess the first thing you had to watch out for was paved roads, right? <laughs> and they're laughing. They're laughing. And if you can make them laugh, you can make them buy. Plain and simple. So my statement is, if you don't think you're very funny, then study humor. There's books you can buy. There's movies you can watch. There's training programs you can take on humor. You can join Toastmasters and join the ones that specialize in humor. And if you you're not going to be funny all at once. I didn't realize that humor was an important part of life until I was in the sixth or seventh grade. But after that, I studied it. And I would do things to see if I could get people to laugh. So I had a public speaking class in at Temple University. And I sat up with a kid in the back of the room. I said, hi, I'm number 4823150. And the kid in the back yells out, that's funny, you don't look Jewish. <laughs> and I got an A in a 10 second talk. It is funny. But if you're not thinking funny, you're not going to act funny. You know, what can I do that's funny? What can I say that's funny? And do you force it a few times? Sure. Do you say things that aren't funny? Sure. Um, as long as you don't do it most of the time, you're okay. If you make fun of yourself, like I'll start out, I have a little thing on exercise and that absolutely levels the playing field that I can say anything next. Hmm. So thank you for watching this video. If you're watching it on YouTube, consider subscribing to this channel and don't forget to click the notification bell. And don't forget to check out Dub and grab yourself a free trial. And, and, grab, your, and, and, and grab yourself.
a free trial. Thanks, Can guys. This is about humor today. It's about being funny. Thanks, guys. See you at the next episode. You guys still there? Hey, subscribe. Seriously, subscribe. Hey, Bueller, Bueller, Bueller. Be but, yeah, but you got to start with a joke. Okay. How, how do we talk about humor and being funny oh. without without starting with she, a joke? She did the hair transplant thing. Oh, so yeah. Say, but, uh, right.